By the end of the Second World War, Japan surrendered. After the war, a period called Occupy Japan followed to revise Japanese constitution and demilitarize Japan. The war left Japan a trail of devastation. Mary was only 24 at that time. She was beautiful and came from a decent family. In her 20s, she often dressed elegantly. She liked to wear glasses, high heels, and a white skirt. After Japan's defeat in World War II, everything has changed. Her father died in the war. Her younger brother then seized all the family properties and drove her out of the house. In desperation, Mary went to Yokohama to look for a job opportunity. At that time, many Japanese people were unemployed. It was hard for a woman to find a job. On September 20th, 1945, Mary sought an advertisement issued by the RAA Association, which was established by the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department of the Japanese government. It read, Being a new generation of women, the club recruits female office workers covering food, clothing, housing and transportation, high income, only for women between the ages of 18 and 25. It looked like an ordinary job advertisement released by the government and published in a national newspaper. Therefore, Mary had no doubt about it and applied for this position. This piece of news had changed life forever. This seemingly good job quickly attracted 60,000 female applicants. Mary was young, beautiful and fluent in English, so she successfully passed the interview. However, she did not know that the job she got was being a prostitute. Mary and other women were detained in comfort camps. They were forced to serve up to 55 guests a day, who were mainly American soldiers. It soon led to the outbreak of sexually transmitted diseases in the camps. In 1946, the Occupation Army Command demanded the Japanese government to close down the comfort camps. The comfort women, including Mary, were driven into the street without any compensation. They suddenly lost their living. Everyone knew that they were prostitutes and no one was willing to offer them an ordinary job. They could only continue to work on the street as a prostitute. These prostitutes were called Pan Pan. They wore heavy makeup and stood on both sides of the street where the American soldiers would pass. But among these women, Mary was different. She was good at English, she could draw and play piano. She never waited for the guests to choose her. Instead, she chose the guests. When Mary walked on the street, she didn't talk to anyone. Mary was famous that everyone wanted to see her, so she was called the Queen Mary. Later, Mary fell in love with an American military officer. The man gave her a ring as a love item. However, soon afterwards, Korean War broke out. The military officer had to be transferred and leave the city. Before the departure, he promised Mary that he would come back to pick her up. Mary started her long wait for 40 years. She believed that the man would come back to marry her. In all these years, Mary never went to anywhere else. She stayed in Yokohama because it was the only place to meet the officer again. When Mary was getting older, she still remained the look of Queen Mary. Every day, she dusted her face with white powder. She believed that would allow the officer to recognize her in the crowd. She insisted in using Shiseido cosmetics because it was the officer's favorite smell. In the eyes of others, Mary looked like a mad woman. She had been on the street for 60 years and had been arrested for 22 times. No hotel was willing to take her in. No one wanted to touch anything Mary used. Mary often went to a barber shop to sit, but everyone didn't want to have a hair cut with her. They had complete contempt for her past. Because of other customers complaining, the shop had to tell Mary not to come again. Mary humbly asked, is it really impossible? After receiving a positive answer, she just said with a little regret, is that so? That's fine. Then she left the place silently and never showed up again. Mary wandered around the streets every day. At night, she curled up within the range of chairs in the empty corridor of a building. Her feet could rest a little on the back, and it was the only place that no one expelled her. Mary's world was full of darkness, but in her later life, she met her best friend, Genji Lo. It became the turning point in her later life. Genji Lo was a homosexual, a singer, and a male prostitute. He ran a bar called the Black Cat. 
Every day, he put on his makeup and sang some jazz songs on stage. Genjiro would notice Mary because his mother was also a prostitute. When he was young, his father was gone and his mother worked hard to support the family. He was jealous of the way his mother looked at other men and even scolded her as a prostitute. After his mother died, he had deep regrets about the way he treated his mother. In 1991, when he saw the 70 years old Mary on the street, he seems to see his mother. So Genjiro became the only person to talk to Mary. They became friends and had meal together every week. When Genjiro performed in his bar, he always reserved a seat for Mary. They became the closest support in the city. However, after a heavy snowfall in 1995, Mary suddenly disappeared. Before she said goodbye, she wrote a letter to Genjiro. Saying, "If you give me another thirty years, I will try to be a good old lady. I have many, many dreams." Later, Genjiro received another letter from Mary, saying that she wanted to go back to Yokohama. It turned out that Mary was sent to a nursing home in her hometown. Genjiro rushed to her hometown to meet her. Soon afterwards, Genjiro passed away from cancer. One year after his death. Mary also passed away at 83 years old. In the end, she never saw the officer again. In 2006, director Nakamura Takahiro made her story into a documentary and screened it internationally.